what's the best way for people to access the work other than this video? Is, uh, you know, is it books? Is it your seminars? Is it just working it yourself? And, and how do you prevent it from turning into something that, you know, the mind sooner or later kind of grabs it away from you when you're not looking and it becomes what one friend of mine called food for the ego. Yeah. But what I say is um, it's on a worksheet that's on my website and in my books. It's called the Judge Your Neighbor Worksheet. What I invite people to do is be willing to lose your peace. Look forward to lose your peace. Be willing to lose your mind. Look forward to losing your mind. Be willing to lose your life. Be willing. Look forward to losing your life. And then begin again. If it gets rough, then sit like a child. Write your thoughts down. That's the way to, to stabilize them. Write them down, your stressful thoughts. Question them, turn them around, and begin again. So by writing it down, you've really <clears throat> invoked action in the real world. Yes. Just, it's too easy to start thinking and it wanders away. It so is. It so is. Well, I really didn't think that. I really didn't believe that. I really, you know, all of the justification and defense, whereas if we write the thought down, then it's stabilized. And no matter what the mind thinks, we go right back to it and continue to apply the four questions. And contemplate. Ask the questions. Like, I need, my, I need my children to approve of me. I need my children to listen to me. I need my partner to love me and respect me. I need you to love me, you know. All of that, just put it on paper and sit. Ask the questions. Be still. Contemplate. And notice what the answers from the heart. Notice what surfaces and experience it and notice how it changes your life. Well, I can see it a little bit, even in just mm. a few days of really working it. And it's, it's funny, because the last story I read in the book was the one of the woman. Before you came, I had a little extra time. The last story I read was the one of the woman. And the last, the very last thing I did was the Judge Your Neighbor worksheet. And uh, I find it a little hard to do all of it all at once. Uh -huh. You know, I have more than one major thought that's yeah. making me unhappy. Yeah. It's actually associated with my new neighbor, Avina. Yeah. And uh, it, it takes time, is what I'm seeing. I mean, it well, would be nice to just kind of, when I was younger, I had the idea that I would one day wake up in an illumined blaze that would, you know, set the world on fire. And yeah. that, maybe that happens to some people, but mm. now I've come to realize that you, you have to be easy with yourself. And this is yeah. a powerful process. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know, but, but, you know, the mind would say, there's so many thoughts that bother me. Well, that is a thought that will keep you from sitting with just one. You know, there's so, there's so many, there's so many. Well, I would say, can you absolutely know that that's true? Just start with one. Just one and work it all the way through the four questions and turn around and begin again. But you know, it's, it's difficult to, um, to sit with, as you would say, all of them, but it's more difficult not to. So again, any stressful feeling in your mind or body, anything's really off, mm -hmm. you, can, you can actually experiment and yes. see. Yes. And I see there is a bit of art. In some of the turnarounds that I read in your book, I would never have thought, oh yeah, you can turn around that way too. It's almost mm -hmm. like geometry or something. Well, it's simply um, the opposites, the possible opposites of the mind you've been experiencing. Like, um, he doesn't care about me. Turned around, I don't care about me. And then find the ways, it would be my job to find the ways that I'm not caring about me to notice those, to, as a true seeker, to find those ways, because as long as I'm in denial about them, I haven't sat with them, then it doesn't change. But to ask myself, where am I not kind to myself, and just sit there and witness it with my eyes closed, maybe, and notice. Then the next time I begin to experience I'm not being kind to myself in those areas, I notice a smile on my face, and I notice how it stops. It's like the end of the necessity for willpower. It's self-realization, and that is the power. That's where change takes place, and it's the only place that permanent change does take place. So my, um, he doesn't care about me, turned around, I don't care about him. Now my job would be to find examples of the ways that I don't care about him, and to, for my sake, anywhere I have done harm, to apologize and make it right and begin again. And this process allows me, the next time I'm unkind to any human being in those areas or other areas, 
I become so aware because I have realized that to hurt you is how I hurt me. And that is masochism. So we could say that I am kind to people because it's a kindness to myself. I have come to realize basically that you are me. So he doesn't care about me. Another turnaround might be he does care about me. And now my job is to sit and find without denial the genuine, genuine truths about the proof that I can find to my mind. All the action you've done toward me or the thoughts, not so much thoughts, but the words toward me that you had given that are kind, that show me you do care about me. And then I come to see that it was my mind saying that you don't care about me doing its job. In other words, I think the thought, he doesn't care about me, and my mind begins to validate that. It gives me all the reasons that it's true you don't care about me, and then all the pictures start to come that prove how unkind you are. So in essence, when I think that thought, the mind's job is to annihilate you, and then it swerves around to annihilate me for annihilating you. So that's where shame and guilt are built into this identity system that the mind insists on, insists on. How else can I be identified as an I, a you, a you? So it's very confusing for the mind to think that it is one body, that it's not everything. So it's how it stays identified, basically. So these turnarounds, you know, it puts me um, at the level of my nature, human or not. My essence is goodness. The essence of everything is goodness, and as you would term it, love. And any thought that would argue with that is going to feel like stress. And that stress is the, it's like a built-in alarm clock. It's a gift, actually. It says, sweetheart, take a look at your mind. You may want to question it now. You are actually out of your nature and feelings will let us know. You made the point about the planet earlier and human nature or not. I, I take it you're a, a strong environmentalist in the sense that you extend this directly to the living Earth. Well. Oh, absolutely. I do love my Prius. But you know... Um, we just got a new Prius. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a kind thing to do. It's, it's a kind thing to do for oneself. Um, Any time we're doing the best that we can do, we like ourselves. And um, but the the first environment to clean up is the internal envi environment, because until we until we clean up our internal environment, we're going to mirror that through the ways that we live. That's just how it is. We try to fix the world, and um, we haven't cleaned up our own internal environment. So we fix the world over here and it pops up over there. We, we put a band-aid over here and then it pops up over there. But we work with the mind and we get it settled there. And then in those places where stress used to live, mind is finally free. It's not stuck in, he doesn't care about me, she doesn't care about me, they don't listen. It's no longer stuck. Well, it's the not universe st itself is unfair. Yeah, the universe itself is unfair to me. So when the mind isn't stuck in these concepts, it's free to be its infinite self. And as its infinite self, its true nature, its intelligence, you know, love is pure intelligence. It can end war on this planet. But as long as it's at war with itself, it doesn't know how. It cannot be creative. It is stuck. It is small. It is little. And we live as dinosaurs and wonder, what is the problem with the world? Well, look at your internal world. That's where the problem is. It begins and ends with you. That's how it is. 